the Carl B. Phillips Show. Hosted by me, Carl B. Phillips, Uncle Carl. The Carl B. Phillips Show. Get ready for another great conversation on the Carl B. Phillips Show. Welcome to the Carl B. Phillips Show. I am Carl B. Phillips, Uncle Carl. Today's guest, wow, I am so honored to be talking to this young man. He's a Grammy Award-winning producer, songwriter, and engineer. He has worked with artists like Beyonce, Justin Timberlake, Kelly Price, Karen Clark Sheard, Kiara Sheard, and so many other great artists. Along with his partner, Jay Moss, they are known as Pajam on the records. He's called PDA Hitman. There you go. That's it. Uncle Paul Allen. What's hey, up, man. my brother? What's what's up? What's up, Uncle Carl? What's happening? <laughs> How you doing, man? You've been good. I'm I'm good. All is well. Now, as I warned well, you, you look good. Well, you look brand. good. You, you look good. You got the, you know different color, you know, little going on, but it really looks good. Wow. We we have known each other for years. Yeah, man. Absolutely. Now, years, you know, watching Absolutely. you up, watching you work, do music and stuff, man. And again, I said it's an honor to be able to sit down and just talk to you when we think about the legendary career that you have. Thank you, man. So, Thank you. Here's the first random question. Okay, let's go. What did you think would be easy before you gave it a try? What did I think would be easy before I gave it a try? Walking. Walking? <laughs> Walking. You when I was a kid. <laughs> yeah, I'm going back to I'm going back to <laughs> I thought, you know, I thought walking would be easy until I tried it, right? Mm -hmm. And so that lesson, I feel like, followed me throughout my career, all right? And so, you know, people think that it looks easy because other people do it, but they don't realize everybody has their own timing. Everybody has their own footwork. They own everything. And so... You know, uh, one phase look easy. We, we, we know, we do what we did. I do what we did when we were kids. You know, we we fall down, we get back up. We fall down, we get back up. You know, and so, so that's how I call it. I call it walking, man. Yeah, walking. Okay, I might remember yeah, that. Man. Walking. Yeah. yeah, walking. It looks easy until you have to get out there and start walking. Exactly. Till you got to start doing it yourself. Right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah man. man. That grown-up thing where you got to start paying your own bills and you can't go to your mama like, why the refrigerator empty? You yeah. on your own now. You go fill it up. <laughs> right, right, man. That's right. You That's are known right. for achieving a lot of accomplishments in the music world. Who is Paul Allen when the music stops? Oh, man, you know, first and foremost, I'm a child of God. Mm -hmm. right? And so um, I try to just center everything around that, uh, whether it's music you know, or not, you know, I, I just try to center it around that. Um, I, I consult with him about everything, you know, and that's been my mantra. I was 16 years old when I left home and I was in a, at a motel room trying to figure out what the heck am I going to do out here on my own? And um, I remember hearing God say, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Wow. I will never leave you by yourself, but you got to remember me. You mm. got to put me first. You put me first. I'll take care of you. And I was 16 on my own own. I mean, not like I went to stay with a friend. I was on my own own, right? Wow. And um, and so, and I remember that. So every phase of my life, you know, I just remember that first, that moment, you know. Um, it's been like the key of my life, you know, key to my success, key to things that God was able to bless me to do is remembering him first, keeping him first, consulting him first. And so, man, that's what I am. I'm a child of God outside of, I mean, just period. Um, outside of music, man, I play chess. Um, I, I hang out with my family. Um, so I'm a family man. Uh, my daughter is seven and, uh, she keeps us on our toes. Uh, she keeps us busy. Uh, she keeps me in check. So, you know, outside of music, man, you know, I, and then she loves music, you know, and I'm not, I don't push it on my kids or nothing like that, but I, you know, she loves music. She loves to dance. And so outside of music, I'm still in music. She plays piano and all of that. And so just like I do, you know, but I don't push it on her, you know, I just let it, let her find it. But yeah. So outside of music, I'm still music. So, so that, that kind of leads me to one of my next questions. What is it like being a father to Kendall? Being a father to Kendall, man, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's an honor. Um, it's, it's, uh, uh, it's humbling. It's, um, 
it's fun it's it's i don't know man it's like a new it's like it's like a different love you know i love my wife but it's like a it's a different love you know and um and so being her father man i just you know i have an opportunity this time around to do it different because i'm in a different season of my life and um and so i'm just available to her in in every capacity and um and i love it so what is a family a perfect family night like in the allen household ah, perfect family night is either cooking all of us cooking together or playing some kind of game kendall loves it she loves involvement so playing some kind of game whether we make it up or not you know sometimes we just she'll make up dances and teach it to us and so that we would you know mimic her or, or follow her she'll you know we become her students as it were um she's she's on the dance team and uh she's one of the leaders of her dance squad and so she brings that home with her that whole attitude so so it's fun our uh, allen house household evening you it's always fun so you mentioned cooking together what is your favorite dish to cook? So let me put it like this, Uncle Phil, Uncle Phillips. I'm a chef. Oh. It doesn't matter what's in the refrigerator. I can make it look, mwah, right? <laughs> it could just, it could be, it could, it could be some some Hawaiian rolls and some turkey meat and some eggs and cheese, and I'll create these little, you know, these little wonderful sliders and you know, put some Parmesan cheese on. I mean, I just, I'm a, I'm a chef, man. So, but my favorite thing to cook is, um, um, like if you was to come over for dinner and actually I need to invite you over to dinner, uh, would be like my, my salmon that I do. Um, and uh, year round, I do a salmon, uh, with like this little brown sugar glaze thing. It's, it's wonderful. Uh, during the summertime, I still do salmon, but I do the cedar plank salmon and I still use my glaze and it's, it's amazing. So you, you cook in the studio and you cook in the kitchen. I <laughs> <laughs> cook in the studio and I cook in the kitchen. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Kendall has launched a recording career. I went mm -hmm. to the Instagram page. I like this little girl, seven years old, 12,000 followers. I only yeah. got 3,000. <laughs> <laughs> kids, man. It's kids. Kids. It's, it's amazing. What was it like giving Kendall the pajama insurance? It's, it was funny because her and I would always make up these little songs, even when I'm teaching her something like she was, I was teaching her, at, I think two or three, how to ride her bike. And, um, um, and something I said had a rhythm to it and she just started bopping to it. And so I was like, Oh, okay. And so we just have this connection where we just make rhythms and stuff. And so one day she was talking about, um, she was in the mirror and she was like doing her little faces and stuff expressions she kept, she kept going you cute oh you cute oh you cute and so i heard her do it a couple of days in a row i was like okay so you remembered the hook maybe this is a hook and so i start working on a beat and i said now say that again what you were saying a couple of days ago and she's oh you cute oh you cute and then that became a song and then she had another idea she said well dad you know, my friends, uh, Kobe and Maya, those are my best friends, but they're not really like friends. They're more like sisters. They're like super BFFs. Hmm. And I was like, that sounds like a song, right? And so <laughs> and so we start humming back and forth a little bit, you know, here and there. And, and then, boom, I came up with another track and then so forth. And it, that's the way the chain has been going so far. So, Wow. Recording yeah. artists. And up for Grammy Awards, consider <laughs> right, man. I'm like, you're seven. What are you what's going on? You know, so yeah, man. Raising her up in your footsteps. You know, you're yeah, gonna yeah. be senior citizen. She's gonna be like, now daddy, I need you to uh... <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Man, I was doing a voiceover for a commercial and uh she was in the studio with me and she was telling me I didn't do it right. Daddy, you didn't do that right. You didn't do that right. She was four. She was four at that time. She's like, you didn't do that right. Dude, you should do it again. I said, how do you know? How do you even know that? She was correct. She was right, by the way. But she, I was like, well, come over here and push, push, push. Let me show you how to push play and push record. She got the, she got the play part right. Record. <laughs> We're still working on it, you know, but yeah, man. Yeah. She sounds adorable. She is. Right, she let's is. do another random question. Sure. If you had to live in a video game, which video game would you want to live in? Madden. 
Madden. I'm a football guy. Yeah, I'm a, if, if, as far as video games, I've always played Madden. And so that football game, I just would be the, the best quarterback that the game's ever seen. That would be me. <laughs> <laughs> with, with number six, with number 12 on the back of my on, on my back of my jersey. I've learned so much about you tonight because all we know is the music side of pop. Yeah, yeah, man. You like yeah, to cook. Man. You like football. You like playing yeah. games. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah, man. Let's talk about Pajam. Okay. How did James, Walt, and Paul create Pajam? So, man, you know, the story goes back now three decades. Um, I was working at uh, this, this guy named Michael Powell's studio. And uh, he took me on as an intern. And that's where I kind of ran into the, um, Walter. And uh, he was doing, he was he was renting the studio out with this company, advertising company. And, um, but he had aspirations to get into the music, the music hmm. industry, but from a business standpoint. And I was like, well, let's talk about it as we, you know, I would do sessions for him, do music for the commercials and things of that nature. Um, we talked about it for a while and um, he started really getting involved and started, getting, you know, jumping into it. And and I was doing very well being um, Mike Powell's right hand man. Right. So I was engineer, then I became his co-producer. And then from that, I started co-producing and writing for other people, like Diddy, Babyface, things of that nature. And um, Mario Winans. And, um, but I was like, yo, this is cool. But Mike taught us one thing is to work with other people. It's another thing to have your own. So that's how I was like, well, you know what? I need to start my own company. So I started Pajam. Started, came up with this name, Pajam. Kind of like pow, boom, bam, Pajam, right? It's like something you know when you hear it. And so I didn't know what that was at the time. I just came up with the name. And uh, Jimmy, my partner, he was at this uh, local studio. Uh, his name was uh, David Robinson, A.V. Day. And he was on David Day's records. I knew David coming up because he was one of my friends. And um, uh, came a time where Dave was going through some transitions with his label. And I was like, well, let me take Jimmy. Let me take Jimmy. Hmm. And I took Jimmy on as my first artist, as a pajama artist, right? And so I was like, you know, let's get some artist development going on that I've seen growing up. Uh, let's get some pictures and things of that nature. Let's see what the, you know, let's, let's work on some music. And we would shop his, shop his project. And I was like, I need, I need a, you know, I'm, I, I'm creative. I need a mute. Mu I mean, I need a manager guy. And then that's when Walter was like, man, I'm willing to jump out. I'm really to jump out there. And so we all just kind of left where we were to kind of conform this project, J Moss project. His name was James Moss at the time or Jimmy Moss at the time. And I was like, you've already tried that. Let's try, let's call it Jay Moss. Let's call you Jay Moss. And um, crazy thing is, in the first year, we shopped him to most of the gospel labels and mm -hmm. some of the R&B labels, and everybody said no. Wow. No. They no, 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 no. And we were like, what? But they started, but they would call back about the production. Mm -hmm. They would call back about the song. Hey, we're working on this project. How about with the song? Hey, we're working on this project. How about the song? One of the songs we did for Karen Clark Sheard's first record was actually one of the songs we were doing. We did for Jay's record, mm -hmm. and they were like, "No, we don't. We don't want Jay, but we do like this song for Karen." And so that went on for nine years. Oh wow! But in the second year, uh, uh, me being the visionary of the of the whole crew, I saw where this thing was starting to take form. Okay, maybe we're looking at the wrong, looking at it wrong. Maybe we worried about this artist thing a little bit too soon. Let's let's see what happens with placing songs. Mm -hmm. And so once we made that decision that second year, we placed nine albums, right? Mm -hmm. And so that included Men of Standard, Karen Clark Sheard, and so many or more. And that was like boom. So we didn't really focus on the artist thing as much anymore. We started using Jay as a way to uh, that way, as a way to brand Jay's name, right? And so that's how we got going as Pajam. Uh, we just kind of twisted, the, reshaped the focus, understood what the vision was and that God obviously had for us. And then, man, boom, it took off like a locomotive. And then finally, nine years later, Vicky Mack calls me and says, hey, have you ever thought about Jay being an artist? <laughs> well, yeah. You know, like, what do you mean have I ever thought about that? But it was good timing because by that time, we had took, took off 
thank God. And then our, our name, as well as the branding of Jay Moss, became a household name. And then we must praise. Yeah, then we must praise. And I, I love the story that you guys talk about how Vicky was like, y'all need one more song for this project. Oh, you heard that story? Yes, man. <laughs> man, woo-wee. She, she was like, look, the record sounds great. I was out in L.A. I'm like, I'm in her office like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I'm playing a record, you know, just a, a little bit. I won't say cocky, but just a little bit really confident that this record is a really good record. And she was like, I love it. I love it. I love it. But I just feel like something's missing. And I was like, something's missing? And she was like, yes. I said, well, what is it? She said, that's not my job. That's your job. Your job is to figure it out. It's my job to figure out that it is missing. It's up to you to figure out what's missing. I was, I tucked my head between my tail and flew back to Detroit. And, uh, day, this is what she said. He was like, hey, I, I, you know, I, I got an idea. And he sent me this idea, humming the words. And he said something about birds. I don't even think we got the ego yet. But we got something about birds. And he and I traded ideas for a moment. And I, you know, he sent me more melody to more lyrics. But we must praise. I took it back out there. She was like, this is it. That, you know, she went crazy. Back, back in the day when that song came out, I think the first time I heard it, uh, Marvin yeah. Linus was playing it. And I'm like, oh, oh my yeah. God. Yeah. This song is crazy. I remember Jay talking about how Vicky had him out barefoot on the beach for the video. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's right, man. That is so right. So yeah. right. When you, when, we, when I was at the church for the the opening recently, I saw a okay. brotherhood between you and now Pastor Jay. Right. Talk about that friendship and the brotherhood that the two of you have even outside of music. Man, you know, it's, 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 it is uncalled for, for, you know, people to last this long together. You know, a lot of groups didn't make it, and, you know, partners didn't make it. Heck, we grew up loving Ellie and Babyface. They didn't make it, you know, and so um, we just, we just, first of all, we're just thankful. Um, but we brothers, man. We we talk about everything. We deal with everything. Um, I'm the godfather of his kids. He's godfather of kid. You know, I mean, we just, it's it's a brotherhood, you know. Then the, then there's music, but then there's a brotherhood, you know. Um, and we've been through each other, with each other ups and downs, and um, just it's just I don't know, man. It's just a, it's a great kinship. And um, I'm thankful, you know, I'm grateful about it because, you know, I, it's not about how many friends you have is if you have a good one, you know. Right. And so he and I are really good friends to each other. We're brothers to each other. Yeah. So when your brother comes and says, I'm about to be a pastor. Uh, Unc, let me tell you something. So we have this thing before this happened. We had this thing where we would talk about R&B singers when it's time for them to, when their time is coming and gone, their retirement plan is to go do plays, right? Mm -hmm. So they get on the road and do plays and they circulate and they make another level of income just from that to kind of recirculate their name. And we would always say artists, gospel artists would turn into pastors. And so we would always laugh about this because so many have gone on to be pastors, right? And so the one day he did call me, he said, hey man, I got to talk to you. I said, okay. First of all, do you talk to me in person? Can you talk to me right now? I hear something in your, in your voice. But why? I never heard this before. What's wrong with you? He was like, are you sick? What's wrong with you? Are you sick? You know, he said, no, man. Um, I got the call. I said, well, you got the call to do what? What? We, what? You, we're going to work with Michael Jackson? What, we, then I'm like, wait, Michael Jackson passed away. So I'm like, uh, so what? <laughs> What, what's this call, you know? And he was like, man, I'm about to come over. And he lives about seven minutes from me. Hmm. Came over and we sat in the driveway. We, was, we were planning on going somewhere, but we ended up sitting in the driveway and he was just like, man, God called me to, to, to minister. P. I, I, what am I supposed to do? And I'm like, are you sure? And he was like, man, I'm so sure. It's like he knocked me on my shoulder and knocked me on the side of my head and was like, yeah, it's it's time. And he's always had a knack for ministry, 
So we did start teasing him about it because, you know, some of his shows would go from singing, singing, singing to like singing and preaching, preaching and singing, preaching and singing. And so we would choke him, joke with him about it. But um, to see it evolve and to see him come to that point, he wouldn't have said it. And, and, and ex- if he didn't accept the call, but if he didn't get the call. And so um, it, it was shocking. But after he said yes, the way he said yes, I was like, okay, let's go. Let's, what you need? What are we going to do? What's, what's the plan? What's the plan? And his first plan was to take over a church that his uh, father-in-law had passed from. Mm-hmm. And um, uh, God said no. And so he ended up, you know, starting Living Waters Church, totally separate from it. Um, that didn't go the way he thought it was going to go because God had another plan. And man, when I tell you that boy is sold out, I mean, you can call with a $200,000 gig. He's not, he's probably going to say no. I mean, he's that, he's that committed. He's that driven. He's that happy. Um, I, you know, I've never seen, I've seen him happy, but this is a different level of happy for him because right. it's, not, it's not about money. It's not about fame. It's not about any of that. You're not going to go to his church and he's doing concerts. Not, it's not that. You know, some some people, yeah, but him is not that. If he sings, if he happens to sing or tag a song, it's a pure treat for the people that's there because they're like in awe that he doesn't sing much, right? And he's all about that pastorhood thing. So go back to, to answer you to your question. When he brought it to me, I paused. I took it seriously. At first, I thought it was a joke. I took it seriously when he showed up in my driveway, and I was like, hey, let's go. And I said, man, when, when I was there, I could see the support. Mm-hmm. I can see the brotherhood uh, mm-hmm. and also the growth of the church. God has really okay. blessed you guys yeah. uh, to, yeah. to grow. Now, what is your role in the church? So uh, they call me Pastor P. Um, I'm over the youth department and I'm over the men's department. And so, um, but whatever he needs, you know, I've always been, I've served in churches since I was a very, very little boy. And so I'm just, I grew up under that old school training of whatever, whatever's needed. Right. So whatever your hands find to do. Exactly. If you need me to go outside the parking lot, I'm willing to do it. You know, it's all good. Looking behind you, we see a lot of Grammy nominations, oh, a lot of Grammy oh. stuff. Amen. Amen. Talk about what some of the artists that called you or reached out to you, you're like, oh man, Justin Timberlake just called. Talk yeah, about yeah. Some of the artists that you were like, wow, such and such just called. Yeah, I yeah, we were at the Grammys um, some years ago, and um, our manager at the time, uh, his name was Bright, Brightware, and um, he said, hey, I'm going to go to the after after party. I was like, good, because we're not going to the after after party. After after party has some different after after levels that we don't, we're not willing to go. So knock yourself out. But he was that guy. And he ran into uh, NSYNC's manager, Johnny Wright, and uh, he they got to talking and he was like on him for like, since we were at the Grammys early that day. And he was just on him about, Hey man, I know the record's done, but you really need to listen to a song. 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 And so by the end of the night, four thirty in the morning, he's waking me up at the hotel. P make a CD right now. Make a CD. That's when CDs are still in. Make a CD right now. And I was like, man, I'm asleep. Wake up, make a CD. I got to run to the airport to meet Johnny. So I can give him the CD. So he went and bought this little player so that he could listen to it on the plane. So I made this CD. And when I made it the first time, I didn't put this song called Do Your Thing on it. Mm. And he listened to it real quickly. And he looked at it and he said, no, where's that, where's that other song, that weird song? I was like, that's not for them. You know, I, we were planning on you pe- pitching it to the Backstreet Boys. And, but we hadn't got, we hadn't finished it yet. And he was like, put that song on there, put that song on there. I'm like, but these other ones are for them. Put that on there. Put it on it. By the time Johnny land, he called Bright and was like, "This song is the song. I'm gonna ha- we're gonna take off one of the guys' songs. I already sent it to the guys. Can y'all get the? Can you get the guys out there in you know in Orlando to their hub by tomorrow?" He was like, "That was so." Everybody flew back on Monday, Tuesday. We were in Orlando, so wow. we didn't even, we didn't we didn't go home. We went straight to Orlando from LA, right? And so and we did we stayed a week there on their resort. And uh, we record the song, and you know that's when Justin was dating Britney Spears, and they came, she came to the studio. It was just cool. But the but the thing about that is everything is about word of mouth, right? And so um, a week later, 
I guess the word got out that we had did that. Then the Backstreet Boys called. We did we did four songs on Backstreet Boys. And so, wait, what? Backstreet? Who? What? Yeah, they like this song and this song and this song and this song and this song. So we went flew to LA to go work with them, you know. And oh man, and, and then that's just the way it goes. And so, um, it, it's it's always a freak out because it's like, wow, that's Boys to Men calling. Wow, that's Drew Hill calling. Wow, Karen's calling, but Dorinda's calling. And so and, and so it's just. It never got old. It never gets old. Um, we just, we just, we're blessed, but we also feel very humble when we get those calls. I watched the interview that you did with um, with Vicky Mac, uh, with you okay. and Jimmy. So that's how I know okay. a lot of stuff about you. Okay, okay, got it. But one of the things, if I remember, I think it was from this interview, you talked about, I forgot which project you were working on, mm. but you had an opportunity to work with Q, Quincy Jones. Mm. Yeah, 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 yeah. Talk about that yeah. experience. Quincy Jones, man, I was working on Tamiya's record, and that was his artist. And, you know, we were in the studio in L.A., and it's so cool to to work with a new artist that a legend has endorsed. So mm -hmm. that was awesome. But I didn't really think that he was going to show up in the studio. And he came in the studio. Not only did he show up, but he came in in grandeur, right? He came in with the whole like, yeah, this is great. I, I respect what you guys are doing. I love young talent. I like to surround myself with it, but let me teach you, you know? And he poured into us in, at every turn. And I just thought it was the most amazing experience, you know? And I, I already broke with like, like I said, Mike Powell. So I was used to a certain level of person, Diddy and Babyface, but when Quincy walked in the studio, it was just breathtaking. You know, just to be honest, and um, and and he knew how to, he knew how to humble you. You know, so even if being younger, you know, you kind of feeling like you, you know, you starting to get a a little swag and get a little system going, and he was like, yeah, but take this with you. Do this, do that. Try this, try that. You know, and um, one one of the songs that we had did, it was like six songs we did on the record, and uh, one of the songs, he was like, I just think someone else should mix it, and I was, you know, whatever, you know. And, and I, he said, well, let me tell you why. And when he explained it, I was like, man, can I, you know, is it all right if I shadow him? He's like, that's what I want to hear. I want you to shadow him. And so I shadowed the guy while he was came to mix it. And it was one of his big guys that mixed a lot of his major, major stuff. And um, then he allowed me to mix it again. Mm -hmm. So now take what you just learned, put it with, with your freshness, and then let's see what it sounds like. And then that's how it ended up being my mix on the record. But it wasn't without the instruction. And man, I've been able to use that my whole career, bro. It was, it was amazing. Wow. So I'll try to get through it quickly because you already heard that story. So I uh, don't know. No, no. <laughs> People may not have heard it. Yeah, yeah. I got you. I got you. True, true, true. So we, yeah. I've looked online and there's this picture with this okay. new song called Leaning. Yeah, man. Yeah, and man. Featuring Jay Moss and Troy Hayes. What's the song about and how did you come up with the concept for the song? So here again, we about a few months ago, uh, Jay Drew called us about working on Karen's record. And so we started working on these songs and ideas to just try to catch a vibe, as it were. And one of which um, Jay was like, yeah, I think this should be for me. So that's that's to come, that's coming soon. And then um, Lean and I just felt like um we were we were I'm moving into a different phase I'm moving more to film and tv and things of that nature as a producer a director and um it took me back to that 16 year old guy when I was like god man you know he I'm, I'm out here by myself he's like I got you I got you just remember me first and so I'm like okay I'm leaning on you I re I know what I heard that line I know what I heard was specifically when I was 16 and so it, that's where it came from, man. That that hook came. Uh, my guy Troy, he's one of our writers, and um, he sung the first verse for me to to give us the idea, the melody, mm -hmm. and I, I just kept it, right. And then once I sent it to Jay, he took it to another level, and <laughs> you know, yeah, man. So it's just you know, uh, PDA hit me. Is just I'm just I'm I'm working towards like this whole DJ Khaled, and you know, on the other side, DJ Khaled, where he just you know, good songs he put out, feature some people. Keep it moving. So, you know, earlier you talked about how uh, Quincy poured into you 
Mm. You work with two people that are, are very dear to me, Brandon Holland and mm -hmm. Byron Stansfield, the stuntmen. Yeah. Yes. Talk about how you're pouring into them to prepare them for. I mean, you've worked with them for a, a good little while now. Yes, they've been on. I'm about to say they've been on our team for a while, and uh, man, they're just some raw, talented guys. Um, and you know, their thing is music. They're just musically inclined. Like they just they hear different. Their beats are different. The core progressions are different. And you know, when they came aboard the the team. Um, whenever we presented songs and stuff, there would be a song that we collaborated on that would make a record, like So Long with uh, uh, Kiera, you know, or um, uh, Jump Jump with Jay Moss, or I'm Not Perfect with Jay Moss, you know. And so it's just, it, it was just a really good collaboration. And man, I just try to just, as we've always done, try to give opportunity to other people, you know. So so Brandon, you know, he's, he's my uh, pastor's son. I've known okay. him since he was born when he was okay, a little kid growing up. Um, yeah. And his mother prayed that he would be a keyboardist for the church. Mm -hmm. okay. um, he, he's my producer. Him and, and Byron worked on my debut project. So, Good. you know, the, the, those are my, my brothers there. So I, yeah. I, I'm i trying to get them to do some more things to get out so people can see them. Like, y'all got to do some videos or something because they both yeah. so quiet. And so they are so quiet, so behind the scenes. Yeah, you know, yeah, man. And so I told myself, man, we got to start. We got to start talking about you guys more. We got to start promoting you guys more. You know, just because you know it's you guys it's almost like a best kept secret of the jam. You know what I mean? And so, and they they agree. You know, they agreed. And so we've been trying to do more with that, man. But they're super talented. We 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 love them. You know, we've kept. We try to help build up their catalog over the years and. Um, you know, that's all I can say, man. You know, at any any turn, we're like, hey, we need this, we need that. They're always there. You know, they never let us down. Um, and they're open to anything. You know, that's the other thing. They have versatility. That's, that's been pajam strength is versatility, and they have the same versatility. You know, from their perspective, of course. If yeah. we could just get them to, to come from behind the scenes. Yeah, man, I know. I, I, was, I was telling Byron, like, man, you doing stuff in the garage? Do a garage band video. <laughs> <laughs> right, exactly, exactly, man, exactly. So, so you kind of mentioned what's next for Paul Allen. Go a little bit more into that. You're moving to film. You're in a different stage of your life. So what's yeah. next? so so um, uh, a couple of years ago, um, me and a partner of mine, Eric Realwright, we um purchased a bunch of equipment. Um, he's been doing uh videos and film and things of that nature. And, um, but I'm me being a creative guy. Um, I had some show ideas some TV show ideas. And, um, so it took a couple of ideas and we actually manifested them into pilot shows and things of that nature. So I have about five TV shows that we're shopping right now. Uh, one of which, one of which is, uh, called Detroit second chance. It's, um, it's a, uh, the, the whole scene is that we own two halfway houses of male facility and a female facilities. Mm -hmm. And one day my partner, which is our attorney, one of our attorneys, uh, his name is Daryl. He called and was like, Hey, I need you to come over to the facilities. I said, okay, what's wrong? I'm a silent partner. I don't really want to come over to the facilities. What's going on? And he was like, no, no, no. I need you to come over. I was like, okay, I'm coming. I'm coming. I'm coming. No, no. Can you come today? I was like, can I come today? this must be really bad. You know, I was like, so we get there. He shows us a replay of what happened in the facilities and what happened in the facilities. We had this guy that was 67 years old. Hmm. Well, he's probably 69 now, but he's, he was at that time. He was 67 years old, been in, been incarcerated 55 years of his life. Wow. How? I don't know, but most of his life. And so since he was 12, he's been in and he was out. He was in our facilities. And the, the incident that he showed us was he stabbed this guy three times inside mm -hmm. no reason no fight no argument no nothing he's walked up to him wow ah, hit him three times right and the guy fell out crawled into the hallway all this is on on tape and so we're going i'm like you know what to do call you already called the, the authorities this insurance but you know but why why are we why are we here you know jay and i are looking are both there and we're looking at the screen like why are we here so he played it again he played it again he played it again he played it again he played it like seven times before i went light bulb and the light bulb was this is a show, right? And so kind of like a reality cops or something like that. People, people don't, people follow the, the prison shows, but when they come out of prison, people don't know that there's a, there's a, there's a take time that they have, to, that they have to either go back to prison 
or to get back into society. Yeah. And so that's what Detroit Second Chance is about. Um, so A and E is going to run it through their pilot season, top of the year, and um, and so we're excited about that. And if they don't do right with the getting us to do the season, we're going to go to Spike TV or something like that. So I'm just putting it out there. But um, but anyway, but yeah. So that show is about. Um, so we have all these people that's in the facility, you know, managers and things of that nature, and directors and things of that nature. So we we interview them in the midst of the chaos and we, we, we wire the people and they go out into the street when they leave and when they go into for jobs or if they say they're going for jobs, they end up in the street, they get back on drugs or whatever the case may be. We're get, catching all this footage and we're using it as it turned into a show. And so that's just one. We have another TV show called big girls need love too. And um, it's pretty much, pretty much what it is. You know, it's like, um, it's like uh, women with big attitudes, big careers, big personality, and feel full-figured women, right? That need love too, and so that's that, you know, that pretty reminds much... me of a, a Kelly Price song. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> you should have told me. <laughs> you should have told me, right? I was right, and so yeah, so that that's uh, you know, that's another one. Um, and then we just I just shot my first film. It's called uh, Catch. It's a dual conscious social film about um, two different cultures. Uh, the, the level playing field growing up in the same neighborhood, same school system, same everything, afforded the same opportunities and so forth. But yet there's a difference when it comes to the law, right? And so that's, we're really excited about that. That was my first, we just wrapped uh, a couple of weeks ago, actually. And um, so, and I and I have on deck uh, three more films to cut. And so, and we're trying to do it on a different level. So I don't, it's not a black film. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm not, no, not taking away from anybody that's doing whatever they're doing, but I'm just, I just think different. And so I want to make sure that we portray that, you know, just different coming from out of Detroit. Man, you you are so awesome. This interview. Thank you, man. Thank you. Thank this you. This has been amazing for me. This will be one of those like, yeah, I, I talked to Paul Allen. My nephew <laughs> got a chance to hang out with him. Yeah. As yeah. we wrap up for yeah. somebody that's 16 years old, like mm -hmm. you. If you had an opportunity to speak into their life, what mm -hmm. would you tell that 16 year old person who's where you where you were at that time now? I would tell them to stop. The first thing I would tell them to stop. You you have to stop for a moment. Stop looking at what's around you, what's what other people are doing. Stop. Close your eyes. Look inside yourself. Hmm. Stop looking in the mirror. Because when you're looking in the mirror, you're looking at what you see. Close your eyes. Who are you from the inside? Who are you? Find out what that is. What that and and people, if they if they stop first, they will find themselves, I think, better. Right. And their purpose is sitting there. It's waiting in everyone. It's it's waiting because there is a purpose for everybody God puts on this earth. And so, and, and so that's how I feel. And so I feel like the first thing I would tell them, stop, close your eyes, find out who you are. Who are you? Who are you? Are you a clone? Are you a copycat? Are you just another? Who are you? Who are you? Who are you meant to, who are you meant to be? You know? And if it's, if it's a, if it's an artist, be an artist. I'm talking about the one that draws. I'm talking about the one that paints. You know, if you're a painter, be a painter, but don't just try to copy and mimic other people. It's something for you. It's something meant for you. And it doesn't matter about money. You have to do it because it makes you happy. You have to do it because you love it. You have to do it because it comes out of you easy. So, you know, LeBron James, you know, I always tell this story and I'm going to let you go. Uh, but LeBron James had all these things he wanted to do. I hear his stories all the time, you know, we, and we all do. But he was a ball player. It, 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 no matter how he sliced it and diced it, he was a ball player. You know, and so though he came into the league with all this expectation, but before he got to the league, he had preparation that came from himself. Mm -hmm. He wanted to play. He wanted to practice. He wanted to, to shoot free throws and do layups. And he wanted to do that because that's what made him happy. That's what he loved to do. And so by the time the world got to see it at 18 or 17, when he went to the league, he had already lived this, lived this life. You know what I mean? And so that's what I would tell people, man. Stop. Close your eyes. Find out who you are. Find out who you're supposed to be. There's a there's a space for you in this crazy, chaotic world. It's a space for you. 
and even in music, because people go, it's so many people doing music and so many songwriters, so many producers, so many artists, but there's a space for you if you go ahead and be you. Ooh, we, we heard a sermon so, right there. Go on and be you. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to go so long, but go on. <laughs> preach it, man. That will, that will <laughs> preach, though. That will preach. Go, go on and be you, man. Just go on and be you. Know, people, people, yeah, people waiting for you to be you. That, that The world's waiting for you to be you. You know, I have an artist named Tyler now. He's a, he's a pop, he's a white pop artist. And and he's he's all these things. He's like, I, I don't know who I am. I don't know who I am. And I'm like, well, let, you know, we put him through boot camp so he can understand how to find who he is, right? And he turned, and and one day he came back from his assignment, and he said, "I know who I am now." I said, "Well, who are you, Tyler?" And he says, "Well, my name is Tyler Schwenk, but I'm a storyteller. Well, I'm a storyteller, and as a storyteller, I also sing, I also play, I also write songs, and so forth. But all of those things are to tell my story. And so, and and in our music that we've been creating, and he's going to be 2024 for us, um, in the music that we're creating." It's all about these stories that, you know, he's telling stories, you know, and so he'll be better off as an artist being able to know who he is versus, man, I'm another guy with a guitar. I'm another guy that plays keys. I'm another guy that plays drums. I'm another guy with a pen. No, you're not just another guy. You know who you are. You're a storyteller. That's who Tyler Schwenk was meant to be. And that's who you're going to be. That's what the world's going to know you for. Man, awesome. Yeah. Thank you so much. My yeah, nephew. Man. Paul PDA yes history. man <laughs> yes sir how can man, I appreciate to you how can people contact you how can we get the music yeah man we're you know anything pajam does is everywhere all right and so anything you anywhere you listen to music it's everywhere so if it's Pandora if it's YouTube if it's if it's Apple if it's Amazon it doesn't matter if it's Spotify if it's if it's uh, a title it don't even matter wherever you go to get music pajam is there um but you can also follow me at PDA underscore pajam, PDA underscore pajam, and that's everywhere. You can always follow J Moss, J Moss at Inside J Moss, everywhere. Same thing, same thing. Man, again, I appreciate this interview. And for those that are watching and listening, I always close by saying this: Remember to work like you don't need the money, love like that's you right. never been hurt, and dance yeah. like no one's watching you. God bless until we meet again. PDA, yes, <laughs> yeah, man. God bless you, man. God bless you, bro. Bless you, man. Yeah, man. The Carl B. Phillips Show. Thank you for listening to the Carl B. Phillips Show. For more information, go to carlbphillips.com. The Carl B. Phillips Show. Follow Carl B. Phillips on Instagram so we can stay in contact with each other.